got me. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining me this morning. We've got Adrian in here pushing buttons for me. So, <laughs> hello and welcome to the Elder Care Academy. Uh, thank you guys for joining us this week. And we are happy to be back in our normal schedule of weekly webinars for you. Um, the Elder Care Academy is something that we had developed probably a couple years ago, but are really going to go full throttle with it this year. Um, so this webinar is going to be the first part of our Elder Care Academy training so we can help you guys with anything that you need as far as training. Um, you will start to see a lot more information about Elder Care Academy. So we want to help insurance agents feel confident. Um, we would love for you guys to select topics on what you want us to help you with, how you, we want to come alongside you and grow your business. Um, so always feel free to do that. Um, and then as always in any of my um, presentations, I don't want it to be a presentation. I want it to be more like a conversation. So thank everyone for joining us this morning. And we're going to get started with OEP, it's like we were done with AEP and you know, you can't ever stop, right? You just gotta keep moving forward. So um, OEP, it's going right now. Um, it is the Medicare Advantage open enrollment period. If you sign up for a Medicare Advantage plan in the fall and then you decide that you don't like it, um, once it takes effect January, you have until the end of March, March 31st, to make a one-time change. So remember, OEP, and we'll go over that throughout this um, slideshow, is that um, it's not for prescription drug plans. It's just for Medicare Advantage plans. So a little bit about what we're going to cover this morning is um, the dates and what all changes can be made during OEP, what all cannot be changed during OEP, which is really, really important. Um, some often things that you can do during OEP, some things that you should be doing as far as talking to your clients and, and things like that. Um, we will dive in more in depth detail on that. And then additional tips to make OEP successful. Um, it is a big time of the year for you guys to uh, do a lot of client retention uh, on any of those products that you wrote them in the fall. Um, so there's lots of things that we'll, we'll kind of go over in today's show. Um, if you guys would comment, um, if you have questions or comments or anything like that, um, please put your comments there. I will do my best to answer them. Usually I have Adrian in here with me <laughs> and she can usually help me guide through the questions and so we can answer those. But good morning, Mathani. We are live on Facebook as well. Good morning, thank you and happy new year to everybody as well. I don't think I introduced myself. I'm Jennifer Harris. I'm the National Marketing Director here. Um, we have been out of the game doing our webinars uh, for a couple weeks. It's hard to do that during the holidays and during AEP. You guys are out busy riding in the field and we don't wanna distract you with our 30 minutes um, here with you guys, but we certainly enjoy it. So let's get back. Um, this is the ultimate reference page for OEP. And we uh, have put out a blog about this. If you don't see our blogs, um, we usually try to put emails out that have those blog links on there. We try to put valid information that you guys need and quick reference guides. And this is probably one of the best ones that we put out because there's lots of talks about, you know, do's and don'ts of OEP, what can happen during OEP um, and what can't happen. So we always want you to think big, do big and get big, right? We want to help you grow and expand. So open enrollment period, OEP, uh, January 1st through March 31st, only for beneficiaries enrolled in an MA or MAPD plans. And um, they'll have new effective dates of a 2131 and 41 enrollment code uh, to be used on the app is OEP. So when you put that enrollment um, 
code on your applications, that's what you're going to put. So let's talk about if you've got somebody that's in an MA only. So they can change to another MA only plan or an MAPD plan and a PDP, so they may lose may lose MA coverage. So here are just some things that they can change. So if you were on a MAPD and you're putting them on an MA only, of course, they're gonna lose their PDP, so you can write a standalone on that. Um, original Medicare with a PDP, Original Medicare with no PDP. Those are the people that you have the options of working with during OEP. Um, if they were on an MAPD, they can get on, or you can write them another MAPD, um, an MA only plan, a PDP, they will lose the MAPD coverage, like I said originally, uh, original Medicare with a PDP, original Medicare with no PDP. Um, and so we can always kind of, that's what we're here for. If you've got a certain scenario or client that you need us to help you with, um, determining whether this is an option for them uh, and they're not happy with their current coverage, we can always you know, break it down and make sure that you're going the right direction. The most questions that we get are, can my client switch from this to this? So this guide will just help you uh, with knowing quickly what they can switch with. So we wanted to make this easy. So PDP, like I said in the beginning, there's no changes to PDPs. Once that comes along, um, it's kind of closed off for OEP unless there's other uh, life-changing events that allows them any changes to their PDPs. And that's a whole nother topic, but we can always help you with that. Uh, Medicare supplements, they can go to another Medicare supplement, will be, but will be subject to underwriting. So if they took out a Medicare Advantage plan um, during AEP and are not happy with it, they can go back to original Medicare and a Medicare supplement, and but they will have to go through underwriting. So they will not be guaranteed issue for that. Any questions? I do have a question here. Um, yep. And um, my question was, uh, will we be emailing the OEP quick reference guide? Um, and we absolutely can do that. I can have her uh, attach this blog in our um, email that goes out after this webinar and you can download it for free. All right. So what can beneficiaries do during OEP? So some activities are off limits for beneficiaries during OEP. So here, here are just a few. So they can't switch from original Medicare to a Medicare Advantage plan, not with that code OEP. If there's an SCP or something like that, I don't want you to get confused. Um, there could be other options, but they cannot use the OEP for that. Um, join a Medicare prescription drug plan if they are on original Medicare. So if they miss that AEP to switch or add a PDP coverage and they're on original Medicare, you cannot write them with that code OEP as a event for them to be able to get a prescription drug plan. Now, Look, there's lots of SCPs, and I know these acronyms kind of get, uh, you know, confusing at sometimes. But there are lots of SCPs going on in different parts of the country due to weather, flooding, all those things. That's a completely different scenario. And so, if you need help with that, if you need list of where we where there are current SCPs going on, uh, reach out to us, and we can get that as well. Um, I do have another couple of questions. Someone go from an MAPD back to original Medicare. Okay, so uh, the question I had was, how does someone go back from an MAPD back to original Medicare? So what you're gonna do is, first things first, usually in order to do that, that's gonna knock out their Medicare Advantage plan is you write them a standalone PDP. Um, but I would advise not to do that until their Medicare supplement is issued and in place. OK, 
okay? So you're gonna write a Medicare supplement. That's all they have to do. You're gonna disenroll from the Medicare Advantage plan, go to a Medicare supplement, and that's taking them back to original uh, Medicare. And you can add um, a standalone PDP for them at that point, but may, they have to go through full underwriting. So they have to be healthy enough to make that switch into a Medicare supplement. Um, and then once that's happened and they're issued that policy, then move forward with the prescription drug plan. You don't wanna do anything if you're trying to move a client from, um, from a Medicare Advantage plan back to a Medicare supplement, please do not mess with any of that until you know that that Medicare supplement plan has been issued. Um, and there's no problems with that because you can get yourself in trouble because if you disenroll them from that Medicare Advantage plan and for some reason they cannot make underwriting with their Medicare supplement, they are stuck with, you know, no insurance or something like that. So you just, you got to be really careful when you do that. Um, I have a couple more questions we'll ask. Uh, is the reference guide on the Medicare Center? It is not on the Medicare Center, but we will resend it out in the in case you missed it email. So be sure that we have your email address and that we can um, send that to you. Um, do they call all carriers? Do they call the carrier to disenroll? That's going to depend. Um, it, like I said, if you write them a standalone PDP, it's automatically going to disenroll them from that MAPD. So my advice is not to touch that Medicare Advantage really until that Medicare supplement is enrolled um, and issued. So we can kind of talk in detail if you need a little more training on that, because um, I know every situation, every client is completely different and that's what we're here for. Um, another question I have, love these questions coming in. If someone joined an MAPD during the, their OE, their initial open enrollment period, okay, will they still need to go through underwriting if they go back to original Medicare and a supplement? So that that's a little tricky. So it depends on when they, uh, how long they have had that Medicare Advantage plan. So remember that's, that they have a trial right, that 12 month trial right. If it's within that trial right, then they can go back to their, their original and if if the original Medicare supplement is available, then they can they have to go back to that. But if not, then then they are guaranteed issue back into a Medicare supplement. But that's only if they're within that 12 month trial right. And um, does Medicare automatically disenroll them from their prior MAPD when they enroll into a supplement plan? No, what's going to kick them out is going to be writing that standalone PDP. So once you write that standalone PDP for someone that had an MAPD, that's what's going to kick them out of that, Medi that MAPD, that Medicare Advantage plan and you're gonna be able to put them on a Medicare supplement. But once again, I can't stress it enough, do not do that until that Medicare supplement has been issued and that policy is in force, okay? Um, I think that's all the questions I have right now. So we'll jump back over here. So uh, a couple different things that are not an option during OEP is to um, switch from a, PDP plan to another PDP, PDP. So you can't switch from one PDP to another PDP. So remember OEP is not for prescription drug plans. Um, it's only comes in that option when you're moving someone off of an MAPD and putting them onto a Medicare supplement and then you're having to write them a standalone PDP. So what can you do during OEP? Here we go. Uh, oh no, this is still what you cannot do. I'm sorry. You cannot do this stuff during OEP. You can, there's no soliciting. So you can't share materials, advertising, the ability to make a plan change or referencing OEP in any way. So, you know, same as Medicare Advantage, you really can't, you know, door knock, you can't, 
do any of that stuff, but you can't solicit saying, hey, it's OEP. If you're not happy with your current plan, uh, contact me because it's OEP. You cannot do that. So no soliciting, no targeting, don't purchase a mailing list or do anything else that might help you identify beneficiaries who are in the OEP because they made a choice during the a a annual enrollment period. So no targeting, no trying to change anyone's mind. We don't want to do that anyways, right? We, we always want to do what's in the best interest of the client. So we want to make sure that we're guiding them in the way that we, we need to do and not trying to change their mind. So you may not contact former enrollees who have selected a new plan. Uh, during the annual enrollment period and tell them that it's OEP and we can make it uh, make a change. You can't do that. So no sales activities. You can't engage in or promote any activities that intend to target OEP as an opportunity to make further sales. So remember, you cannot do that. Um, so I did have another question real quick. What about clients that called prior to OEP? after December 7th. So if they contact you, that's a whole different ball game, right? So you have the um, capability to respond because they reached out to you. You cannot reach out to them, but if they reach into you, then you absolutely can speak to them. Um, I'm not sure, um, I got a, question saying, um, my clients get robocalls due to OEP, why is that allowed? I don't know. I think um, that's one of the things that these new laws and things like that are trying to change with call centers and, and so on and so forth. Um, so it's only a matter of time, I would say, you know, I can't answer to why that it why it is allowed, but it should it's should not be. They should not be able to solicit um, during OEP. Um, another question is, can we, but we can solicit right now for Medicare supplement plan. You absolutely can. Uh, Medicare supplements are the number one door opener, right? So there's the green light to go after anybody that's on a Medicare supplement um, and and change them any time of the year. There's no restrictions on Medicare supplement plans. Um, events at retail centers, uh, that's a question. Can you do that? Is that, you know, if it's an educational event and you happen to be doing an educational event that's strictly educational and you bring them in, um, then you absolutely can do that. I do know that there are, um, some of like the Walmarts that have been able to, if you worked a Walmart store, you could have kept your Walmart store for OEP. Um, but remember, people are addressing you, you're not addressing them. So that's, that's the big difference there. Just make sure that you're not soliciting or targeting for them to come based on, hey, it's OEP, come sit. If you're not happy with your plan, come over here and talk to me. It's all about how you say it and making sure that you're not doing it based on OEP, if that makes sense to everyone. So here are some things that you can be doing during this OEP. So a couple of things is keep marketing, conduct marketing activities that focus on other enrollment opportunities. Like I said, don't advertise, it's OEP, including agents who haven't yet made an enrollment decision, uh, dual eligibles, LIS beneficiaries, all of those, people are who you should be still marketing to. Um, so service your clients, make sure your clients have received their new insurance cards. It's you're servicing your clients. You're making a call saying, hey, your effective date was January 1st. Just want to make sure you've received your cards. Have you made your wellness appointments? Do they know about all the benefits? Do they know about their you know, over-the-counter benefits, make sure that you're reviewing their plans that you put them in during this AEP. 
and then guess what guys when if they're not happy with it if if they've even had time yet um this early in the game to utilize their plan and if they're not happy with it they're going to tell you so be smart service your clients we should always be doing that anyways but it just gives you a little bit of an end during this time be responsive distribute materials and meet with clients who have requested information. So if they've requested any more information, be sure to do that. Promote five-star plans. Five-star plans are a way to sell Medicare Advantage all year round, other than when someone's aging in. So thanks, uh, you know, there's, like I stated, there's SEPs. Um, your client can switch to higher quality outside of the annual enrollment period um, on five-star plans. Agents, like I said, people that are turning 65 that have, um, or maybe not just someone turning 65, there's more people these days that are working past age 65. I mean, look, my mom just retired on the 22nd of December and she's 75 years old. So, you know, it is people are working past the age of 65 so don't always put yourself in a box to that dual eligibles lis can enroll disenroll or switch to another um, part d plan either a pdp or mapd once per calendar quarter during the first nine months of the i mean <laughs> first i think that's supposed to say nine months of the year um, so they can't switch the last quarter. So just remember that. So LIS and dual eligibles can switch once per quarter, except the last quarter of the year. Uh, cross sell, help protect your clients out of pocket costs with dental, hospital, uh, indemnity, life insurance, cancer policies, all of that stuff. How many of you guys wrote, um, Medicare Advantage plans this year that you did not put a hospital indemnity plan with, right? So you could go back to them, check to see how their policy was and make that sale of adding a hospital indemnity plan to that Medicare Advantage plan to kind of put a bow on it, help them um, with all of that and their needs for that hospital indemnity plan is a perfect pair with a Medicare Advantage plan. So there are creative ways for you to still be making sales during OEP outside of someone that's just aging in. Yes, 75, you know, I, I can't believe she's 75 just now retiring, but super excited for her. Um, the numbers, this is a little bit of um, just some deaf research that we thought was pretty interesting. These are based on numbers during the 2022 OEP, kind of what happened. Our partners at Deaf Research do an amazing job um, with getting this information out there, talking about what consumers are doing. Um, and we will, if you comment that you want the PDP for, I mean, not PDP, goodness, PDF, a uh, copy of these research numbers, uh, we'll be able to get that out to you. So 65% of the total Medicare eligible population live in a five-star county. That's pretty good. So look at the opportunity that you have for four or five star plans, being able to write them all year round and being able for them to have a um, special enrollment for you to be able to do that. 16% shopped in OEP. This OEP saw an incredible doubling in shopping. So consumers are shopping during OEP. They've gotten plans, they're not happy with them, or they're just got a rate increase um, on their Medicare supplements and so they're shopping so whether that's writing them another medicare supplement plan um, or if you're able to make that change for them on based on an oep so um, as seen on the chart there shopping activity there they did shop did not shop um, shopped did not switch so if you look at that there were you know Based on that, there were lots that shopped, 26% um, did not shop, 
I mean, shopped, but did not switch. So look at these plans, switch carriers, 2% switch carriers, um, 5%, you know, all this is based on the research that they have done. So that purple line is what, what's happened here. So if you look, 64% didn't shop, 65% um, or 16% did shop. So this is just some good information. If you see that for seniors who feel that general inflation has hurt their ability to afford health care the most, shopping was a robust 26% and switching hit a double digit of 10%. So I'm sorry, I was reading that chart a little wrong. So 10% did switch during OEP. So just, just some pretty cool numbers that our partners at Deaf Research put out. All right, so uh, we want to make sure that you have all of our wonderful people that you can reach out to at any time. This is our fabulous team here. Um, some faces might look familiar, some some may not, but here's our contact information here. If you ever need to reach out to us, um, always you can email info at eisgroup.net. Um, if you're not sure who to reach out to, or you can reach out to someone um, directly as well and our phone number is over here um so i'm going to open the floor for any more questions that you have i know we kind of went over a lot of information oh <laughs> adrian walked in on me and i'm like what can they not hear me <laughs> okay so there is a facebook question i have no idea how to get to it adrian oh i see him i see him okay um, good morning, Stephen. Um, I have a client that lost coverage September 22nd because of Part B premium not being paid. She is now eligible February 1st again. Enrollment period is SEP, right? Um, let me look into that, Mathani, because I don't want to tell you the wrong answer. My first thought would not be uh, could be an SCP, but it it might be something different. So I'm going to take that as a takeaway, and I'll get you the answer today. Um, and then another question: If you're in a retail location, there a way to is there a way to start a conversation? Um, I think the creative way to start a conversation is you know maybe what their health care coverage is, you know, what they have, um, just educating yourself on what they have currently. Um, you're not coming to them saying, are you unhappy with your plan? Um, it's just, hey, you know, is there something that I can help you with as far as making sure that um, if you don't know what your current benefits are, what what we can do there? So it's it's a little tricky and sometimes your wording um i would just kind of be cautious in the fact that you're as long as you're not saying hey it's oep come over you can switch your plan if you're not happy i think you're pretty safe to do your normal um rules with inside the retail program any other questions i don't see any others okay i do uh, can you please give an example of dual eligible that can enroll in a PDP or MAPD in a certain quarter period of the year? Um, so if you're dual eligible, you can switch your plan one time, once per quarter. So if they were in a, a different uh, Medicare Advantage plan, you know, last quarter, that's not a good example because I can't switch the last quarter of the year, but let's say it's further in the quarter. So they can switch plans once per quarter, um, no matter what, they get that eligibility one time a quarter. I hope that answers your question. Rather than existing dual or becoming dual, right? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. If they're currently a dual eligible, they can switch once per quarter. If you're writing a new, newly eligible, dual eligible, then 
they get that one time for this quarter. So you enroll them, they, they just became dual eligible. You enroll them, they've only got that one time this quarter. Now next quarter, you could switch them again. Um, is this the first training of the training series? Um, so our Elder Care Academy is, this is the first training that we have put out this year. Um, our next training is going to be probably our endurance training um, will be part of that that we do every year. But we are currently trying to get our year scheduled, but we would love your ideas on any type of trainings that you want to see in the Elder Care Academy. Um, that's what we're here for. We we want to know where we can, you know, meet you where your needs need to be. And so shoot us an email to that info at eisgroup.net if there's something specific that you want some training on, and we'll certainly love to start that. Um, let me see. Can here's another question. Can we ask a consumer about their ACA plan? to possibly help them right now if they have an SEP. And sometimes there's Medicare person in the home, can we possibly help? So absolutely, um, ACA, if you're in there and their ACA plan, if they currently have an ACA plan or if you're going into that house writing an ACA plan, um, one of our great, partners, Galen Hendricks, if you haven't listened to any of her stuff, does spouse in the house. So um, it talks about if if you're there for um, one of the husband or spouse or whatever, and then the other one has a Medicare supplement or a Medicare plan, you can absolutely help them because they're addressing you. You're not soliciting it. That's the key. If you're already there helping the, the spouse and then the other one needs help too, you can absolutely open that door and do that. Um, in what scenarios would a five-star plan fit outside of OEP, IEP, or AEP? Um, you know, there are plans that become five-star plans, um, or maybe they're not, ha maybe you didn't put them in a five-star plan and they want to switch, so you can write them, um, a five-star plan. Um, so let me go back to that. You can't switch. <laughs> so they're really, you really have what you said, OEP, IEP, or AEP, unless there is an SEP is when you could be write a five-star plan, but SEP, you can really write any plan. I hope that makes sense. Um, can we make the five-star plans can we market five-star plans through the mail and other places? Um, I want to ask that question to our compliance department um, and just make sure I'm not giving you wrong information. So I will take that as a takeaway and we'll get back to you on that answer. Any other questions? You guys have been fantastic this morning with questions. I love it. Yes, yes. Any other questions? All right, so if there's something that you need us to help you with, whether that's um, some different companies that fit in your mix or anything like that, um, be sure to reach out to one of us and we can help you with any of that. If you see that there are plans in your areas that you're not contracted with, maybe some five-star plans, or anything like that, you can reach out to us and we can help you jump on board with that. Um, and then as always, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to one of our marketers or myself, anybody on our team is happy to help. And then um, I guess we will be back when, Adrian? Next Thursday, OEP again. Next Thursday, oh, so I was wrong. So this is the first part. Second part of the OEP, Elder Care Academy is next Thursday. So I will see you guys here next Thursday at 10 a.m. All right. Everybody have a fantastic day.